Today is the day that we tackle the staircase lock in Bézier. Where is it? I'm ready when you're ready. There's seven locks all in a row. Yeah. Three, I think this is the last one though. I, I feel like I've counted like four. Wait, wait, stop! Wait, wait, wait. Jesus, that was unlike anything else I've ever done in my life. We scraped it out the other day. It looked kind of doable but stressful and difficult and I feel like we kind of were a bit stressed to the max with the round lock so I'm hoping this is easier. I think as long as there's no one in the lock with us, as long as we're on our own we're golden. As if we get like yeah. crazy Ted in there with his, uh, yeah. his higher boat then we're in trouble. Yeah, we, we have to hope that we don't go in with any higher anyway, We'll see what happens. Seven locks one after the other. Yeah. Like some sort of crazy Donkey Kong for boats. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? It's like Donkey Kong for boats or yeah. Mario. Mario boat. Anyway. The only good thing is that once we go through these locks is that there is not another lock for, I think, like something like 50 kilometres. All right, Teresa. <laughs> we better get going, didn't we? Yeah. We better get away from this beautiful medieval town mm. and uh, get on with our... Uh, our adventure. Yeah. Get the, the French canals. Uphill. Seven up. Seven right? up. Seven up. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. Before tackling the seven lock staircase, we first had to cross the aqueduct leading to the staircase. This was our first aqueduct, and an aqueduct, of course, is a bridge that carries water. Once again, we were doing something that we would never have gotten to do if it weren't for the French canals. Obviously, this is not something that you do on the sea or on the ocean. And it was really awesome and a little bit nerve wracking to take our floating home across a bridge, across a river. But like the French canals in general, it was a super cool experience. Yeah, we've got to do a turn here as well, haven't we? Like a 90 degree turn? Yeah. You've got a boat hook handy. Yeah. So, we're going to get pushed on to starboard. Okay. So you, that's where you're going to need to be looking out for the old boat hook. A little bit more difficult for me because I can't run over there quickly. I've got the helm to do, deal with. Are you going to try and come in on one side or the other? I want to try starboard because it's easier. Because we're going to get blown on to starboard. So otherwise we'll be trying to fight. Yeah, they've gone on to port. So I think we'll be on starboard. Okay, you're going to really need to be, have a boat hook in your hand for this. Lock one of the seven lock staircase. Three, so you're going to walk here in. Are you getting on the boat? Get on the boat. I, get on the boat because I can't fend off. The next lock. Why don't you go and ask the lady to help you? When with the, as they're moving, ask her if she can come and take your line. There's, two, there's only two of us. Allow me to explain our dilemma. This lock was actually seven locks all in a row. 
The lock keepers are a friendly bunch, but they're not there to act as line handlers. It's expected that everyone manages their own lines, and the lock keepers guide everyone through the process while operating the lock itself, which, after all, is their job. Our conundrum was that we really didn't have enough hands to do this comfortably ourselves. Don't yank her. Ideally, we would have had Nick at the helm, another person at the bow to fend off and throw the lines, and a third person on the dock to take the lines. Alas, with just the two of us, we had to find another way. Okay. This alternative method involved me taking the bow line and walking alongside the boat, leaving Nick to helm as well as fend off, as well as throw me the stern line. However, this technique of me taking the bow line to the next lock and Nick throwing me the stern line wasn't going to work for this second lock. Can anyone see why? What's the play for the next one? Yeah, you. Yeah, tell them we can't do it on our own. Okay, so let me explain. Obviously, I couldn't walk with the bow line over the bridge because then the bow line would be in the wrong place. So the plan, much to Nick's dismay, was that I would give both lines back to him on the boat. He would take the boat through the bridge himself and I would be waiting on the other side for him to throw me the lines. Okay, I'm, off. I'm going to leave the bow line right yeah, here. Can you just walk me forward, babe? Yeah. As in walk me into the lock, yeah? But fend off at the stern. Yeah. Try and go slowly, man. Nick got the bow line to me almost straight away. By the time I had it tied off, the boat had drifted across to the other side of the lock, too far for Nick to throw out rather heavy and thick mooring lines, which incidentally we immediately changed out for our old Genoa sheets, which are far lighter and easier to handle. All right, second lock done, <clears throat> and now from now on there is no little bridges to uh, obstruct our way. So now I will be leading the boat with the bow line, I think, for the rest of the way, which is easy-ish and also difficult at the same time. I feel sorry for Nick, he's doing literally everything. Are you back on the boat after this? No, 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 I'm taking the bow line. <laughs> but once we're through, we don't have a lock for, I think, like something like 50 kilometers or something, like a really long time, so. This will be it for a while, and I think that we'll need the rest. Merci. Okay. All right, I'm off at the stern trees. Don't pull the nose in, otherwise you'll just dagger her into the uh, push her off, babe. I think that's three, four, four done, four done I think. 
It was indeed wishful thinking as there were actually seven locks to go through. However, by the time we had reached the halfway point, we were starting to get our technique sorted and now that our mask had hit the lock wall once or maybe twice, we had more confidence in our protective bucket arrangements on the ends of the mast. We were also very grateful for the newly installed barriers that kept the crowds back, although for some reason the very last lock had been left open, giving our growing audience a chance to get up nice and close. However, eventually we finally made it out. Yeah, jump on mate. Get ready to send off on starboard. Jesus, that was unlike anything else I've ever done in my life. My throat's raw from like screaming at Nick in a good way for the last half an hour. Screaming to Nick, really, not screaming at Nick. By the end of the staircase, I think we had the hang of it almost. It was, uh, it got better as we went along. But boy, oh boy, that was, that, that was tough. That wasn't, I cannot compare that experience to anything else that I've done on a boat or of a boat for that matter. It was just nuts. And I don't know whether the camera kind of picked up. It was hard to film because um, obviously- Did you get both cameras on? I had both cameras on, but the two cameras can only point in one direction at a time and I was unable to film much with my phone, uh, obviously, because I was running around the whole time. But anyway, hopefully you get the idea. It was it was intense. I broke my thumb now. Uh, I, think you're, I think you said you broke your thumb. I was about to be really sympathetic. You broke your thumbnail. I've been growing that for months his guitar, his plucking thumb. It is my thumb. Okay, I need a, I don't know, I need a beer, but it's not time for a beer yet, so I'll have to content myself with a large glass of icy cold water because we have ice now. So we realized on our first night that we were here that the little kind of camping stakes that we bought to tie up with when we tie up against the bank like this, they were nowhere near <laughs> like good enough for the job. It was uh, hilarious really, they were so tiny. So they actually did come out of the ground. So we are now, or when I say we, obviously Nick is currently fashioning an alternative. He bought like, wooden handles that are meant to go in spades, like a spade, like a shovel. They come with the shovel section and with the handle section, so he bought two handles. And uh, now he's trying to chisel them into some kind of stake-like thing, so that we, so that we can uh, use them to tie up to the side of the bank with. Genius, really. Hopefully it works. We thought our challenges for the day were over with the staircase, but no, we had actually completely forgotten about the Maupass Tunnel, which is 161 metres long and incidentally the oldest canal tunnel in the world. It's about a metre on this side. So we obviously left Bezier this morning and uh, we're heading for a village called Katstang today which is apparently a very popular spot on the Canal du Midi to stop and uh, explore and also lots of people make Katstang their home port. Then we can settle down for another day or two and explore the area. I do find it absolutely amazing that we are literally going through the middle of France but we're right in the middle of rural France, southern France, it's just insane. So there, so we just see it, some sort of uh, ancient French church. This is pretty spectacular. It's absolutely amazing. I'm just in awe right now. Well, we are firmly in wine growing country now. 
Vineyards, 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 vineyards. And I tell you what, this is all making me really thirsty. I don't think many sailboats get to sail through a vineyard. What about over here? I managed to snag ourselves a really nice spot. We're kind of in more mountainous uh, terrain at the moment, which is really a weird thing to, to do on your sailboat, but there you are. There you go, a lovely vineyard. <laughs> Bit breezy. <laughs> I have a feeling today might be a bit of a slow day to be honest. We're stuck at another double lock, but yeah, all good. Another beautiful day in France. Happy.